That's that's rough to. That is the Jay Crest manner. Yeah, the the Jay Crest manner exactly. It's like freehold, especially in a bolstering environment, is going to be a very tough dungeon to play. Uh, just in terms of like where these groups are going to get count, because a lot of times you're going to be doing a ton of trash onto Ludwig and a ton of trash on the trophy pack. But now we're going to see the innovations coming out from both sides. All right, let's get into it, guys. Freehold starting off our series. We do have bolstering active here, so we're not going to see up, big 33% oh. trash at the start. The biggest we hey. saw was what like 17, right, from Wunderbar. Both teams are already on a slightly different first pull here, though. The uh, the uh On the side of the boys, they end up doing that first nine pack, which is like very typical of like a live strategy where Golden Guardians are using their uh, five meld comp, or uh, I guess full in viz comp to be able to skip past the first nine mobs of the dungeon uh, are pulling a bunch of mobs towards that corner area to be able to get them stacked up quickly and are dealing with those mobs where the boys are now doing a very similar pull to what we saw from golden guardians but the boys blew their bloodlust on that first nine pack yeah it, it's possible they added in the there's a, a four pack from upstairs that is possible to mm -hmm. be added into that so they may have upgraded it to a 13 pack pull because they have 14 percent count already uh, before and this was before stuff even started to die in the second pull. But yeah, you're you're absolutely right. It's it is a it, that was a pull that looked more like a live servers pull than an MDI size pull. However, Golden Guardians here also only able to pick up 13% trash count from their first pull of the dungeon. So uh, they didn't get very much more count than the boys did from their first pull. And it took them a little bit more maneuvering to do so. So uh, actually, I think I like the, I, I like where the boys ended up here. They're going to have quite a lot more count, and they're not going to be pulling the boss all that much later than Golden Guardians are. Yeah, exactly. I think that, that that's an important thing to denote, is that they're not going to be pulling it all too much later. Uh, so now you do see Golden Guardians here have dismounted Sky Captain Crag off of that uh, bird, off of Shark Bait, and now Lighty does pull Crag off to the side, allowing the Hunters to be able to bait that Guano out in the middle of the room. Uh, we're on the side of the boys. They have now recently engaged Sky Captain Crag and are tanking him near his nest, which is an interesting position. All right, so it looks, looks like we have some ads here, some Corsairs that are going to be joining the fun here for Golden Guardians. They've trapped one of those mobs, and now that has also been broken, the CC. And they're just going to bring these on top of Sky Cap and Crag. They have to be a little bit careful as uh, Bolstering is active here. They need to make so, sure that they don't have them die before Crag does. Something also that they need to be careful of is uh, Crag's cast. Uh, he has he has a healing ability that you do see the revitalizing brew right there uh, that just got interrupted. And then the bone saw that they grab that Golden Guardians grabbed also has a heal. So they need to make sure that they're allocating kicks uh, to both the bone saw and to Sky Captain Crab to make Look sure that they don't though. end up missing. Look some at of those mobs dying at all the exact same time, and they've actually gained damage on Crag by pulling the trash onto him as well because mm -hmm. of the rapid reload traits that all three of those hunters are playing. Extremely yeah, so now, beautiful execution there from Golden Guardians, and they're going to now move on to the rest of the dungeon. Boys, though, not far behind either. They are just they're ten, ten percent trash count ahead, and killing this boss uh, thirty seconds later. That's that's not a bad trade. Tw yeah, twenty seconds for ten percent trash count. I think I'd take the I think I take that trade there any day of the week. Uh, so now you do see the Golden Guardians are moving on towards the second boss area. Uh, of, of course, they are running this triple hunter comp. We've seen rogues historically in this dungeon to be able to start RP on a couple of these events a little bit earlier. Um, but without the rogues present, you do have to come up with a little bit more innovative ways of dealing with some of this stuff. So now the boys and Golden Guardians, I think the Golden Guardians did drink that brew to be able to get some of those uh, mobs to activate. You see Yoda using his camouflage running off to the side to be able to start that lightning RP that is uh, in the Trothak area where the boys have already engaged Jolly and Raul as well. So the boys, movement optimization-wise, a little bit faster than the Golden Guardians. Yeah, they're, they're pretty quick to get into this pull. Petco on the side of the boys, off on that stealth mission as well. Both teams using pretty much the same strategy at this point. But of course, the Golden Guardians do have a little bit more trash that they're going to need to find in the rest of their route. Yoda returning to the fray for them, getting into this boss fight a little bit faster than Petco will for the side of the boys. This fight is very much to uh, hoping that you get bad brews for your team. Uh, so in previous seasons of MDI being on like a 19 key level, the bad brews did a little bit less damage. Whereas once you do start getting it, it ramped up to the 20, 21, 22 key level, uh, we have it on 21. So the bad brews are going to be doing effectively more damage towards the boss's HP per bad brew that you get. So you're really hoping that you get those and you're able to stack all of the trash plus the bosses inside of it. Right, so that's, that's that bartender that throws out a brew every mm -hmm. every five or ten seconds, and 
of the there are three possibilities, right? One one of which will give a debuff to everything that's hit rather than a buff. And that one The debuff is way better. Yeah. yeah. The, the fact that that one scales up with key level, whereas the, the crit buff or whatever is a uh, you know a number that's flat based on key level or flat relative to the key level, makes it so that those bad brews are extremely, extremely valuable. However, uh, the Cripper is not bad either, especially with three hunters. Interestingly enough, it looks like Lighty uh, tagged a pack of trash before making his way towards the, the Trothak area. So yeah, they do have that trash that is running underneath that bridge. Uh, Lighty's getting everything grouped up for... Ooh, this is a fairly substantial pull on the bolstering setting. Yeah, they have to be a little bit careful here. So one of the good things about the MDI setup we have in this dungeon is that uh, because of the crew you're joining, you're getting those casters out of here. Casters mm -hmm. become friendly after you finish that second boss and go away. And those casters are ones that have slightly less health than everything around them. With those casters removed, pretty much every mob in these pulls has about the same amount of health as each other. I think the knuckle dusters maybe have a, a smidge more the than everything else. But, the scrappers also have uh, yeah, a, a little, like bit, a little extra, bit more as well. They're all in the same ballpark. There's nothing like that has 20... half as much health as, as the others, yeah, which yeah, yeah. is the casters are a lot less health. So uh, once those are removed, it's actually possible to fair. It's actually possible to pull fairly big, even with bol bolstering active. All right, so here's the interesting bolstering tech that you have right here. You have the triple crusher on top of Ludwig. So uh, for those who don't know, basically the crushers can get bolstered by other mobs that are killed nearby. But whenever the crushers themselves die, they will not bolster other enemies. So the Golden Guardians here are able to utilize the hunters and the rapid reload traits, multi-shotting, not really caring about even cleaving. Of course, they're still going to be kill commanding Ludwig because Ludwig has substantially more health. But this is a really smooth tech for being able to not mismanage your bolstering it's just a really efficient bolstering route because previous like under normal circumstances these crushers aren't efficient because they have so much health relative to the count they give but under these circumstances in bolstering they are efficient yeah it's they're they take less of a penalty on bolstering than the other mods do because of that weird interaction uh, and yeah. that means that they're able to get this this ludwig done with some other count That'll really advance them as they're they're now almost caught up to where the boys are in terms of trash count. However, the boys are in the middle of fighting some stuff as well. Golden Guardians now going out here, doing some trash while they're waiting for the next RP to finish and pulling a crusher as well. They're going to need to focus damage onto that crusher. They'll then be bringing it in to Trothak. Hmm. So I, I would assume that they're going to be cleaving off of this crusher, probably uh, multi-shotting far oh, far less frequently. Look, you see Lip and Yoda right there uh, yeah. casting that Cobra shot. So they're they're electing to do significantly less AOE and get less uh, like efficient priority damage to make sure that that crusher is getting uh, further in line HP wise with the rest of the pack. Just because pulling that crusher on top of the rest of the stuff is going to be efficient. Yeah, now you can see because it's lower, it's its health bar is less full than the other mobs. They're able to start multi-shotting again, and you see all of those projectiles now coming out from all three of the hunters as they, they've been given the go-ahead to start AoEing. And once again, that, that damage assignment from this team is very, very, very good. They're doing a great job here of not losing any time to bolstering. Look at the boys. Uh, on the side of the boys, too, uh, they're neck and neck. Like, they have... While they pulled oh, a different, a little bit different goes down route. on the side of, of Golden Guardians. What happened there? Is, was he outside did of the Did you get melee? Was he out of the arena? Yeah, I, I believe. Okay, no, he, he must have something. He was not outside of the arena because he he at least got rest. Because he got rest, yeah. However, it's possible that what what can happen is the food can get queued up to get thrown at you, and then you like exactly you know, run into the middle of the arena, and then it hits you. So that's still possible. But I I think it yeah melee may also have been the case. It, it it's, it's hard to tell, but yeah, that, something went wrong, and JB was the result of the punishment of that. Something right tragic now, occurred on the side of gold. Right now, Guardians. the boys and. Golden Guardians are neck and neck. 10% uh, boss differential separates them. Ooh, the boys are electing to grab the Crusher. Well, on the side of Golden Guardians, they're grabbing a bunch of those neutral mobs that are off to the side. Yeah, the Crusher with Trothak can be a little bit of a interesting decision because you yes. see there it can kind of deny the space around the boss. But when you don't have any melee in your group, that's not as big of a, a downside. But... You also don't have anybody in the group that really benefits from having an extra mob next okay. to the boss. If there were two, then the hunters would be gaining some single target, but because exactly. there's just the one, uh, it's, you know, it is still a, an overall DPS increase, but it's not going to increase the damage they do to Trothak. I, I would have, I, I think it, I think you're right. I think I would probably have elected to run double crusher on top of Trothak because you are able to gain some single target benefit. But it does, you do end up like losing uh, the Mistweaver damage because if you have double crush, there's no way the Mistweaver actually does anything realistically. 
On the side of Golden Guardians, they grab some of the trash that was off to the side near that Urgroth obelisk placement, and they were able to grab that in. Lighty there, for those who didn't see, did a spectacular move. He intervened J.B. whenever he got harpooned. Uh, the harpooner can pull your tank out of the arena, forcing him to get food thrown on him, but Lighty with the presence of mind to make sure that he's getting ready to cast that intervene to not to get gripped out of the arena is a, just a spectacular play. All right, Golden Guardians now fire off the Intimidating Shout. They have a bunch of mobs there that are now fleeing in terror as Lighty is just... Okay, so th this has got to be... Lighty is going to get the count here from this Ravager. Where's the rest of the group? The rest of the group, doing? I think, might be in Nihilotha. Oh, they're in the Obelisk. I think yeah, Lighty... yeah, they're in Nihilotha. Yeah, so Lighty had already he, Lighty melded off combat from the mobs that he intimidating shouted, and now he will be pulling the boss while the rest of the team is in Nihilotha. The rest of the team now comes out of Nihilotha, and they are going to be fighting the mobs here. They're not going to be kiting. They will be fighting all of these awakened enemies, and then they're still going to need a little bit of count, so at the end of the boss fight, they will either be doing Ravagers or Cannonballs. Meanwhile, on the side of the boys, we are doing something different. Uh, over here, they're just trying to get this count from these Ravager pulls. But it looks like something may have gone horribly awry here, as I note that there are still enemies alive. Let's see if they... Do they still have a Ravager included in there? Yes, they do. Okay, then they're they're okay. It, it seems as if they still have a Ravager. One would hope. If, if there isn't a Ravager involved in this, then then something has gone really, really, this really is a, wrong. This is a tragedy. I, I don't see a Ravager in there, but maybe... There it is. There's a gas coming out. They had, a, right. they had to kick the Ravager because the pack didn't get uh, separated quick enough was the initial problem. Yeah, that is... Very unfortunate. Meanwhile, on the side of Golden Guardians, though, they are done here with these four obelisks, pretty much. There's that Dark Fury yeah. cast. Lighty gets out of it, barely. GG Cannonball dies. Barrage is... Yeah. Harlan, sub... Yeah, 30, right? The, the, the reason that four obelisks on Harlan is so doable is because he does relatively few mechanics at the start of the fight, which is when you have yeah. the four obelisks. And then by the time he ramps up to have difficult mechanics uh, after the 60% threshold, there are no longer any obelisks alive. And so it's, it actually works out really naturally well, that combination there. But Golden Guardians aren't quite done yet. They don't just have this boss fight ahead of them. They still have to get another 12% trash count. We'll have to see exactly what their plans are to do that. The boys are in a very similar situation. They are also fighting those obelisks here with Harlan. They are a little bit behind in terms of where they are relative to Golden Guardians, but this is a very volatile strategy. Whatever the Golden Guardians are up to here, okay, they've, they've jumped ahead a little bit here in trash count. I think they may have had a Ravager pull go off or something in the middle of this. This is That would be interesting to get a Ravager pull, because now they only need 6% enemy forces count. Now Harlan Sweet has dropped below that 30% threshold. Of course, he is he does do global combat on a lot of his stuff, uh, including the Cannonball Barrage. So now you actually see the mobs uh, and the whole entire team getting grouped up right on top of all of this trash, preparing, stacking up for that Cannonball Barrage. You have the Shockwave to get everything grouped up just perfectly. All of the trash starts to go down. Bolstering up Harlan's sweep. Harlan's at 1% HP. He oh, ends up going down the rest though, of the trash. 98% trash count. The, these mobs have a lot of bolstering stacks there at 100% though. There it goes. That should be the win Ooh. there. That is, yes. Man, there it is. Match. Golden Guardians taking the win and doing it in great fashion as we're coming to know and to expect. But also pretty interesting as well, Zyro. We're going to look at the times it's going to compare to Wunderbar. As they're on other sides of the bracket, but they know that they're going to be staring at each other down. And about a 40 second difference in favor of Wunderbar after Golden Guardians took it. Yeah, in term, in general, I don't think this was like the best effort that we've ever seen from this Golden Guardians team, right? It was a lot slower than their counterparts in Wunderbar. And I think you could just tell from the overall progression of the dungeon that Golden Guardians wasn't really playing that great here. They were behind for the first like eight minutes. And I think they were behind up until they pulled off that obelisk skip at the end. Mm -hmm. So we, we can probably see an improvement from them, but I don't know about 40 seconds. Yeah, and maybe it just starts coming down to just I'm curious as to how oh, you you would analyze this one, Dranos, between running with all the obelisks and actually ending up fighting with them. It takes a lot of time, but you do have your healer with you the entire time to help with the spells, to make sure they can add some extra damage. We've been kind of going back and forth with to kite or not to kite for Freehold for quite a while now. Yeah, in Freehold, the big thing that doesn't exist in other dungeons, that does exist in favor of not kiting the obelisk is that then you get access to using Harlan's cannonball barrage to get count at the end of the dungeon. And that's not something you can do if you're relying on the healer not being there, right? Uh, because it's such a high, heavy damage thing to be doing. Uh, so 
I think that's the big thing that the team get access, gets access to by fighting those four obelisks with the boss rather than by kiting them. Yeah, most definitely. And that's also going to, you know, get us to start thinking about the next series as well with, with I don't know if it was surprise or not, Zyra. Let me know what you think on this for having reaping coming into it because it felt like a lot of the reaping was going to get passed over in favor of practicing for later rounds, but it is interesting to start seeing it coming up so early here. Yeah, um, well, the thing is, like, the Reaping is only available in the first eight matches, I believe, so after that, those dungeons return to Awaken, but I think Waycrest Manor is a great dungeon for Reaping. Underwater as well, right? They really lend themselves to reap to, to, to sort of a, a DK Reaping style, right, where you yeah. can AoE a bunch of trash on top of the boss, and then you can also AoE the Reaping mobs on top of the boss as well, so if the teams actually have practice those Reaping dungeons with the DKs, they're going to absolutely blitz through them, but at the same time, you know, do you want to commit a uh, two different dungeons of practice time, basically, to practicing Waycrest Manor, because you probably have to have both Reaping and Awaken practice if you want to leave it open. So that's probably why we're seeing it being banned, but it looks like both these teams are kind of prepared for it. It's true. I, I think that you also need to remember there is an interesting interaction in the Soulbound Goliath room, whereas if any mobs pass through the doorway, it will reset Soulbound Goliath. So uh, where you actually kill the mobs on Reaping is also just as important as to like what mobs you are pulling in that courtyard area. Yeah, that's a good point as well. And Zyro, do you have anything else to add for that freehold dungeon as we start taking a look at the re replay again here? Yeah, I kind of want to go over what happened in this dungeon because it was kind of a weird setup, right? We saw initially the boys pulling 14% more trash early on. Meth uh, sorry, not Method and A. Golden Guardians made up a little bit of trash count by being efficient by cleaving that trash on top of uh, on top of the first boss. They cut up a little bit, but they ended up pulling this second boss at roughly the same time with just more trash count in favor of the boys. And it wasn't until this last obelisk skip that that Golden Guardians pulled off that they kind of came in the lead. The Ravager pack that, that, that the boys ended up dealing with on its own solo kind of cost them the match, whereas Golden Guardians, just like we saw earlier, they dealt with one of the Ravager packs for the rest of the percentage during the boss, which is pretty impressive on its own. That's true. Uh, very, very true. And it, it's always crazy to look at how quickly freehold runs can go. And it's just the most minor of differences a lot of times, titles that'll just start putting one team over the top. Oh, yeah. Es especially in a bolstering setting where you just are like, where do I even get 30 count with <laughs> with one pull? You're, tr you're trying to just like manage where you're going to be able to obtain the count that you're looking to, to get. And it's like the boys do a very unconventional pull at the at the beginning and we were talking about it on cast we're like is this even good and, and stuff like that whenever you are in a bolstering setting forces you to innovate typically on death effects as well like most of the time going to be like this though it's true and let's set our sights now onto waycrest is fortified bursting volcanic and reaping one of the you know, probably one of the best affix combinations we can possibly think of for a dungeon like waycrest here drenos Oh yeah, this is, this is gonna be great. Another important thing here that's not really listed on this is the absence of Awakened. These teams have been playing with Awakened on both the live servers and in the MDI for the past like five, six months now. And now they're gonna have to deal with a dungeon without access to those obelisks for skips and without worrying about it and without using it as a cooldown recovery period as well. So all of those old strategies that were kind of developed over the past six months with the Awakened as a, you know, a core assumption are now gone. So uh, no. the reaping coming in is also really, really big though. Yeah, of course. Do you think we're gonna have any like throwback classes coming into this one's heddles? I, I was rogue? suspect that we're going to see the the DK, <laughs> double DK demon hunter because- it, <laughs> Careful. <laughs> should, should, should be good for you. I, I, I make no promises that we're gonna see double DK demon hunter, but it should be good for this on paper. I. I yeah, and I mean, I've only seen Triple Hunter in every dungeon, so I don't even know what I know anymore, man. <laughs> Speaking of on paper, let's start taking a look at Rawl, as this is usually the site of some of the largest and most aggressive pulls possible, Zyro. Yeah, and, you know, those those average wipes, like, that's a pretty crazy number, right? 25% failure on this boss. One out of every four times teams pull this boss, they end up wiping. It's not because Rawl's a difficult boss, right? It's because they're just pulling so much trash on top of it that the, the failure rate goes up massively. So, I mean, having one and a half people die on average every time you pull the boss is, is pretty crazy. Yeah. If you're playing with death Bursting. Likes, the boss actually gets easier with, with reaping because you get like not you get the, the reaping wave on top as well to blow up everything at the start. So you're actually doing way more damage on pull if you can bring a reaping wave from outside of Rawl's room into his room with all of his trash. 
I don't know. I have no idea though what the teams are going to do with reaping. I don't know where they're going to plan to have it. I've I've forgotten what we did uh, yeah. in the MDI where reaping was active. <laughs> it's yeah. So so it is bursting, but in addition to that, it's also like you get the reaping, so, so your way of the crane is a little bit better. That's true. Oh, Let's see what they got. As game's getting started right now between Golden Guardians and the boys. We we have death knights here, but not from both teams. Golden Guardians have decided Double Death Knight Demon Hunter is the play here. This is a composition that we've seen in Junkyard previously in this very MDI, whereas the boys are on Double Hunter and Demon Hunter as well. Heddles, what, what do you make of these comp differences? Oh, goodness. I don't, know, I don't know how much advantage the Double Hunter actually brings in terms of boss damage that it provides because it is a fortified setting, but it, it should slightly increase survivability. Like, those hunters are normally pretty bad survivability-wise, but having access to the aspect of the turtle is, is like, it negates bursting in such a significant way that I do think that there is merit in both of these compositions. But right now, Golden Guardians, how they're pulling the dungeon is way better than what, what the boys have done. Golden Guardians grabbing uh, the, the guards and the captains from outside of the room and pulling it right on top of uh, Hearts main triad and trying to nuke down the boss as quickly as possible and they're starting to catch up to what the boys did even though the boys didn't pull a ton of trash on the opener on top of triad yeah this um <laughs> this is gonna be awesome oh we get a death though on the side of the boys chaya going down actually on the demon hunter that's not a spec i would have expected to die here on this first boss especially with with fortified active instead of tyrannical uh but uh, it's a spec where an unfortunate jagged nettles can get you However, it does have access to uh, the Netherwalk. Not used though. I wonder if he got. I wonder if he may have gotten disoriented. It's hard to say because those frogs, uh, whenever they die, they drop a green puddle on the ground, and if you stand in the green puddle, you get disoriented for what is it, six seconds or something like that? Uh, You're yeah, disoriented. I, yeah, usually less because you end up being dead before the ex effect expires. But <laughs> exactly. Uh, but, but, I would assume that may have been what happened. It's it's hard to really say. Golden Guardians here are pulling these guards and captains off to the side. Uh, Lighty, the only one getting in combat with it. Oh, unfortunately, Yoda Pad also getting in combat. Oh no, dude! And... Oh, the volcanic, the volcanic into the thing from beyond, and now Golden Guardians. No! Are going to have to it's gonna be a here. white for Golden Guardians. We, we've had a we've had a tragedy occur on the side of Golden Guardians. It's as affixes and corruption have teamed up in a way that they never could before on a reaping dungeon to just murder this whole team the boys on the other hand pulling now into the courtyard area here they have matron brindle they're not pulling it onto the boss they're just doing some trash here again you have to be really cognizant of that exact trash count number as it reaches 20 yes. percent. that is the break point the 20 percent number will be when we see our first reaping wave spawn and the difference there, therefore, between hitting like a 19% on a pull and hitting 20% is massive in terms of pathing to that dungeon. So the boys also pulled some of the frogs in the uh, in in the Heartsbane Triad room. I don't know if those spawn reaping or not. They do on death affixes, so I, I think it's assumed that they probably spawn reaping. But like they did get 2% trash count, but if they end up spawning a reaping wave oh. while in combat with Soulbound Goliath, if mobs come through the door, they will reset the mobs. Okay, look what's going on on the side of Golden Guardians. They're pulling everything into the Soulbound Goliath here, and look at everything just melt. Demon Hunter, or Death Knights Oof. spiking in damage here. They are now above that 20% threshold. One zombie is gonna resurrect these souls, and here we go, take two. The mobs coming back. Every soul is based on the mob that it was spawned from, and they have a slightly different set of abilities. So caster mobs turn into these caster souls uh, that spam out a, a percent health-based blast. Uh, most mobs just do a stacking dispel on the tank that does need to be dispelled. And then big mobs, big lieutenant mobs, will do a frontal smash that you need to get out of. So it seems as if what I said was fiction, and no, no longer does Reaping reset Soulbound Goliath once it passes through the doors. Yeah, I, I remember things being a little bit weird in the in the middle of actual Reaping season, but it does look like that is now fixed, which is uh, great news, of course. Yeah, it, it, it used to be that way. Uh, clearly not that way anymore. And Golden Guardians, you can see actually how much they've caught up here on boss health. Oh, the boys! The boys have triggered their Reaping Wave in the middle of this pull, and Rads has gone down as a result. Oh, Rads! They need oh, to find no. a way to resurrect him. They don't have a battle res, though, so they're, the way to resurrect him is going to be wiping. Oh, Chaya. Unfortunately. Hop. Hop. Let's get Ch dash. Yeah, Chaya's going to try and kite this out. It is potentially possible, but he does get stunned by the Soulthorns cast. Uh, that will lead to him perishing. <laughs> and down he goes. And that will uh, soon be followed is... by the rest of the boys here, and they are now in capital T trouble. And now they are capital D dead. That is definitely the case. 
Golden Guardians Goodbye, also Galadra. at 20% on Soulbound Goliath, but they are going to be able to finish it rather than bring it back up to 100%. And they're pulling more trash actually here. Oh, I, maybe I spoke too soon. Oh, they're doing oh. something aggressive here. Bunch of trash coming out here. A lot of maggots in this pull as well. And those maggots do a spit debuff. If that all targets the same person, luckily we see most of them on Yoda there. Demon Hunter, a great target to withstand that magic damage. Oh. Eddie though goes down to 10%. Like... Gets hit with the full sized life cocoon. Dude, Demon Hunter with uh, Fel Barrage is immaculate at being able to survive all of these maggots because he is able to get just an immense amount of leech. So he gets all the debuffs on him. He Fel Barrages and is like, I don't even need your healing, JB. Oh, uh, Lip, you seem to have perished. Right. However, the pack has is going to be soon finished. Uh, JB's going to res up Lip and it's going to be okay. They, they the don't have battles well. though. And Lip will have to release here because they've crossed that 40% threshold. Yeah. That means we're going to see a Reaping Wave. And there is actually one of those big Lost Souls from Matron Brindle that does that frontal swirly. On both sides, actually. Both sides fighting Matron Brindle's Lost Soul here. Oh my goodness, the nostalgia is just, just rushing do back think, now. Do you think they get access to Blood Sunday if they deplete the dungeon? <laughs> it definitely looks like... But both teams have made some plays that look like they're going to try and find out. <laughs> I, I do not believe that anybody's going to deplete this dungeon. <laughs> Dratos is just being toxic. All right, so now the boss have, have perished on the side of Golden Guardians. Now Golden Guardians are making their way down the hallway. I wonder how much trash they're going to pull into Raw the Gluttonous. So this this dungeon was the original 1 million DPS pull. We saw that from Team D one of the weekends as they pulled all of the trash into Raw's room, into Raw. Uh, Lighty gearing up to be able to pull all of this trash, including some of the stuff in the hallway, straight into Raw. It is bursting. So be watching the... Uh, be looking to see how uh, everybody's going to be able to deal with this once these mobs do end up getting blown up. You see the death and decays coming down. You see the fell barrage coming out. All Shakib these mobs are starting to get blown up. Shakib is holding on to cooldowns here, and I love this. Shakib not using his cooldowns on here because they are about to go over 60% here, and then they will get a reaping win. Okay, so it was one DK's cooldowns, and oh, now no, Shakib goes it out right as he pops his unholy oh. frenzy. Oh, no. oh, goodness. That is the he exact opposite damage. of what you wanted to happen there. And now Golden Guardians had this plan that would have resulted in having a huge burst of damage for this Reaping Wave, and that is falling apart. Lip now in huge damage range too. J.B also. They have a lot of extra maggots here because a couple of Infest casts went out, and Infest cast leads those maggots multiplying. They might be able to survive this, but they're certainly not going to be able to have that explosive burst to do it quickly that they would have had had Shakib been able to survive there. The that's, boys, though, also have That's really bad, but bad. the boys are in... Yeah. <laughs> that's bad for Golden Guardians, but the boys are definitely in more trouble, as Petco is currently dead, uh, while Soulbound and Goliath is at 20%, so they are a full boss behind at this point. Yeah, the, I mean, the boys had a much more catastrophic wipe earlier, right? But both teams have similar numbers on the death log here, but one of those was five deaths from the boys while a boss is at 20% HP, and that is not something from which you can easily recover. Golden Guardians, meanwhile, you know, th this death is, is slowing them down. It's slowing them down by a substantial amount. It could cost them a close match, but it's not going to turn a match that wasn't close into a close match. Exactly. Uh, Lip starting to drop pretty low here, uh, but does get topped up by JB. And now you actually see Raw the Glutton starting to go down here momentarily. The boys, on the other hand, on the right-hand side of the screen, Petco has been res, and now Rad's boom is... Uh, Ooh, okay, so he's not pulling the stuff into Raw. He's actually just lining it around the corner, trying to get everything uh, synced up as quickly as he can. Hmm, I think they're going to take the should've... Reaping Wave in here, maybe. They don't have Death Knights, though, to benefit from doing something like that. So we'll see exactly what their strategy is going to evolve here. They're certainly about to trigger their second Reaping Wave of the dungeon, though, as they cross that 40% threshold. How do you like the Hunters in this Reaping environment? Because Golden Guardians with the DK, they're separating out how many DK cooldowns they use per set, right? So they're not using 100% of the damage all at once. Yeah, it, 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 the hunter, the hunters here are not, they're not bad at dealing in big AOE, right? Big AOE is like a, hunters are fine at that, but they don't have a mm -hmm. unique niche at it like the Unholy Death Knights do. And I think that when the Reaping adds in all of these extra, like four or five extra massive pulls into every dungeon, I do, I do believe that is enough to make those Death Knights at least one of them worthwhile. Yeah, now you actually see Golden Guardians. They are pulling uh, the the downstairs Matron 2 with a significant portion of their trash. Meanwhile, uh, though, the that is down in that area. 
the boys are, are taking this thing into Rawl. They actually, I think they have enough trash here to spawn a Reaping Wave as well. So we'll get to see how much single target they can get as a result of all mm -hmm. this. And you can see Chaya actually doing that big AoE with the Fel Barrage. They cross... No, they don't actually. They, they're, are they going to reach that 60% amount? I think they will. They have a lot of mobs there getting low. And yes, they will. They need to be careful of bursting. But yeah, I think yeah. they're going to get it. The positive side of having Reaping uh, with bursting is the fact that like once your reaping ends up spawning, your monk can hold way of the crane to be able to just cleave the spinning crane kick off of the amount of reaping mobs that are just sitting right on top of the boss. Right here, you do see uh, Bob popping that vivify, so maybe he pops spinning crane or, uh, way of the crane a little bit earlier. And Eladra ends up going down, but they do have a battle rest for him. Unfortunately, not running any of those death knights, uh, druids, or warlocks, so no battle rest classes available. So they have to channel that engineering res on him. Eladra ends up uh, standing up, getting that res. Golden guardians are. Pulling the trash in the Lord and Lady Waycrest room, so significantly more progressed in the dungeon right now. Yeah, they are doing great here. Pulling a bunch of trash all together. They are not pulling the boss onto this. They are just pulling a reaping wave into this trash. I would have actually not been surprised. Yeah, actually, okay, here we go. We do see the boss getting pulled out. I was about to say, this is the kind of thing I was expecting them to do. Looks like they may have just been waiting for cooldowns. Once again, you can see Shakif holding onto that Unholy Frenzy, but Lip going off right now on the pull. This is going to get them not actually to that last reaping wave of the dungeon or anything, but it's going to do a huge amount of damage to all of these enemies. But yeah, look, Sh uh, Shaq and Lip both are still separating out their cooldowns. Shakib still has access to that Unholy Frenzy, where Lip popped his blood of the enemy and that Unholy Frenzy almost immediately on pull whenever everything was starting to get grouped up. So they're they're doing a really good job of using the DK I'm actually, cooldowns. I'm not sure I like it on the in this situation. I'm not sure I like Shakib's saving of the Unholy Frenzy for later. He may just not have had his other stuff to go with. But exactly. There, there, there isn't really a benefit that you're getting here by using the Unholy Frenzy later in this boss fight because there's not more trash to be pulled onto it or a Reaping Wave that will spawn during yeah. it. Um, but I did. I love the way that they were planning to do that in the Raw Room. I, I think that that in particular maybe was it, it, it could just be uh, taking too much damage away from Lips, uh, like damage, like a AOE single target damage conversion via his faster might and stuff like that. So maybe you want to like slow down on your burst, but I don't know. I think I agree. I think it's holding, it's saving when you don't necessarily need to. All right, and we see the team now almost done actually with Lord and Lady Waycrest, unfortified these bosses melting fairly quickly. This boss in particular, when you have access to a protection warrior, that protection warrior does huge amounts of damage to Lord Waycrest with the spell reflect ability. Uh, that, <laughs> that just shreds the bosses, uh, or shreds Lord Waycrest because his, his wasting strike is reflectable. You can see they're assigning their damage here such that these two are going to die at roughly the same time. In fact, they're they're actually laying off of Lord Waycrest and just letting it die. Ooh, Rats goes those down. For... <gasps> the boys are, are perishing here. That's going to be a full team wipe for them. Yeah, oh, this yep, is that, that is, that is... <laughs> that is That's brutal. They, they, had a, they, they decided to try and use a B-Res to save the pull, and then they ended up using their B-Res and still wiping fully, and that is just a really, really rough spot to be in. Gonna cost them a load of time. They're gonna have to just try and figure out exactly how they can hope to recover here. They are gonna keep trying though, because of course things could go horrifically bad for Golden Guardians in this spot. Okay, so here we go. They're they're onto the last boss now. We have all of the trash coming in here as well. They will be using their Death Knight cooldowns to blow up this, and then they will have another set of trash coming in with that final reaping wave of the dungeon. There goes the death in the case. Both Death Knights just blasting off here on pull. They're not saving anything. They popped the army reaping too. Wave. Everything has expired. They are now going to line of sight around this little thing here to make sure that they can bring all of the souls, because of course there are more souls coming from the Lord and Lady Waycrest room. Those will be joining the fun here, but Gorak Tull is already dead on my screen. That thing is, that thing has disappeared. All of its health Why has, is he? has just okay, so been removed. This just in, double, uh, <laughs> double Army of the Dead, full DK cooldowns, murders bosses in uh, 45 seconds. All right, cool. That Justice Bloodlust ends, too. That is unreasonable, but that is going to be right. the win for Golden Guardians. Wow. <laughs> what in the world was that speed? Golden Guardians taking the win, giving us a great dose of nostalgia as well, getting to see some reaping back in the tournament. And, Zyro, we were talking about this beforehand. Are people going to practice this? Are people going to commit to just saying... Uh, we're just not going to touch this dungeon at all. We're not going to worry about these apexes at all. Golden Guardians just 